Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Tom, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, I wrote to you maybe a year back that I actually was considering getting a fake family to get a promotion at work. But now I have some articles I thought you may actually find interesting, and also a thank you. These articles caught my attention and I thought I'd pass them on. I see MGTOW themes quite a bit. Well Tom, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. I put three of the articles you sent me in the description, and from the title of this talk you'd think that it was actually dangerous to be a man out there and dating, but oh no, this video is about the insane dangers of dating if you're a woman. The first article is called A Hooters is Serving Angel Shots to Protect Women on Bad Tinder Dates. And apparently Tinder and Plenty of Fish have become so dangerous for some women because apparently the guys that women are meeting off the dating apps, some of them can be a little bit creepy. Because we all know that when you meet a stranger off a dating app, you aren't meeting that person in a traditional place, with regards to your friends and co-workers being around so they can screen them out for you. So apparently some creepy guys are getting past women's creep detectors and somehow getting onto dates with them. And Hooters is here to help. First of all, who goes on a date at Hooters? If you're a woman and the guy asks you out on a first date at Hooters, then Houston, you should basically say, Hooters, we have a problem. But if you visit the link to this article, you'll find a wonderful picture of a poster that Hooters is currently posting in their women's bathroom and says the following, and I quote, Is your Tinder and Plenty of Fish date not who they say they were in their profile? Do you feel unsafe or even a bit weird? We are here to help. Just go to the bar and order an angel shot using one of the three following options. Number one, neat your bartender will escort you to your vehicle. Number two, with ice, your bartender will call an Uber or Lyft for you. Number three, with lime, your bartender will call the police. We'll handle things discreetly and without a lot of fuss." Unquote. First of all, by posting this particular article and story in Business Insider, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a secret ad in a woman's bathroom because many so-called creepy men might actually start reading these articles, and then when a woman orders an angel shot with lime, the guy knows that the woman is going to call the cops on him. This poster was spotted at a Hooters in South Africa. I also know that people tend to have a lot of sex in alleyways behind bars and clubs in South Africa, so I thought to myself maybe this was actually a good precaution. But apparently this idea of putting up a poster like this in a woman's bathroom seems to have originated at an establishment called the Iberian Rooster, which is actually located in St. Petersburg, Florida. Similar posters were spotted in English bars and pubs as well. As online dating becomes increasingly popular, men that would have never gotten dates in the past because they weren't part of any social circles are miraculously getting dates, and all they have to do is learn to type nicely into their text messages and get some professional headshots that look like amateur headshots for their dating profile. The problem is that women on dates don't want to tell a guy they're interested in or that he actually creeps her out because they actually have no idea what's going to trigger him or not. So instead they need something like an easy button from Staples Business Depot. In this case, the easy button is the angel shot. The second article in the description is called Ask for Angela is a secret to escaping a bad or unsafe date. And it's the same concept as the Hooters Angel shot, except instead of Angel, it's actually Angela. Looks like the creators of this campaign were extremely creative when they basically came up with this name. Now all of this seems to be making perfect sense in a world where there are increasing numbers of blind dates. But you know as well as I do that someone is going to use Angel shots and Angela to punish guys that did nothing wrong. Maybe she feels like getting revenge because he forced her to split the bell. Maybe he rejected her and doesn't actually want to go home with her and bang her brains out because we all know that women are usually primed for sex on the first date, if they really like you. But if they don't like you, now they have the option to call the cops on you at Hooters by basically asking for lime. Talk about sour grapes or sour limes. Apparently this is all about ending sexual violence, but what kind of sexual violence is going to happen in a well-lit Hooters restaurant with tons of people coming and going? The only place that sex might happen in such a place is in a bathroom stall. The words used in this poster are absolutely insane. If you feel a little bit weird, it's a first date from Tinder, so the odds are pretty high that it's actually going to feel a little bit weird because this is the first time you've actually met that person before. What about the part where the Tinder date is not exactly who they said they were in their profile? What did the guy do, lie about his height or possibly his penis size? Is his 2 inch pecker rubbing against your 3 inch labia? It must be his height, right? Did he lie about being 6 feet tall and is now wearing creepy looking platform shoes like Disco Stew from The Simpsons? Looks like dating just got a lot more dangerous if you're a dude. I think the posters like this are there to make women feel safer, and that it has nothing to do with actually improving actual safety. Companies like Hooters see this as a publicity stunt that might actually bring them more female customers, because they could probably use more women in the young female demographic to raise their sales. In Lincolnshire, England, an organization called Lincolnshire Rape Crisis 
was responsible for putting similar posters up in the restrooms at a local bathroom. So it might not even be the organizations themselves that are doing this, but some disgruntled feminist out there that basically wants to take rights away from men and make us suffer. Imagine if all men had to do to help get women arrested for scheming against men was to stick posters up in the men's room. I'm sure that there would be many MRAs out there looking to take their revenge on unsuspecting women. So why are guys supposedly so aggressive and rude to women these days? It's obviously made up rape culture, but in places where it's not, it probably has a lot more to do with the epidemic of single mothers, because men are taught to basically treat women nicely by their mothers. They never saw normal male and female interactions before, so when they get out into the real world, they didn't know all the proper behaviors. Or they just did basically everything wrong. But don't worry guys, you can basically improve your game, otherwise, you're going to jail with a twist of lime. Moving on to the third article you sent me, Tom, it's called... I tried feminist dating app Bumble, and it made me feel more depressed than empowered. It's the third article down below, and it's about a feminist single lady that decided to give the Bumble dating app a try. She says that it's terrible because the woman has to break the ice first and come up with an interesting one-liner to attract the attention and curiosity of the man, instead of the other way around. The app was supposed to make women feel empowered because it meant that creepy guys they basically matched with couldn't talk to them first until the woman screened them first and then sent them a message. But apparently this feminist has learned that it's not very empowering to make the first move on a guy. She didn't realize how hard it was to reach out to a guy first. You see, folks, I love feminists and their desire for equality, especially when it backfires in her face like in this particular situation. It looks like online dating has become so stressful and emotional for special little snowflakes because it's so hard to reach out to a guy and risk rejection. Women say that men through the patriarchy have the power to approach women and women don't have that power. Well, now women are given that same power and they complain that it's hard work to think of something interesting to say. I'm sure there are many women on Bumble that match with hot guys they might be interested in, but never actually contact them because they think the guy is way out of her league. Here are a couple of short paragraphs from Kelly Diamond, the author of this article, and I quote, Bumble makes me feel like I should take more power and have more confidence. This is a lesson that I'm still learning. And it's also what depressed me about Bumble and online dating in general. Why can't I just take control of the situation? Am I that shy? That uncomfortable? Or is it really that I just don't care enough to bother? I will say that the supposedly feminist dating app did actually make me feel a little bit more in control because it was able to decide who would actually contact me. But I actually now believe Tinder to be more of a feminist online dating choice, as everyone has equal opportunity to send messages and because it includes all the genders and sexual preferences." Unquote. So there you have it, folks. If this isn't proof that women want superiority over men, then I don't know what is. They want superiority so long as it doesn't backfire in their face. The creator of the Bumble app used to work for Tinder and blackmailed the creators of Tinder for a whole bunch of money. And then she used it to start Bumble because she thought it would be better for women. Now we all know the truth and it looks like Bumble is dangerous for a woman's ego and self-esteem because they have to take the risk of rejection. But still, the risk is rather tiny. What Kelly is probably really saying is that it's too hard to contact men first. I guess now she finally understands what it's like to be a man and constantly messaging women and being rejected over and over again. Well, Kelly, don't let the male privilege hit you in the ass on the way out the door. Apparently, this privilege is so hard to handle that Kelly would rather meet men in real life than actually meet them on Bumble. I just love watching female privilege explode in a woman's face. I think that an easy way that Bumble could get around this quagmire is to create an approve button so that once a man and a woman match, the woman clicks the approve button and this allows the man to send her a message first. That way, the woman can still filter out all the so-called creepy dudes while at the same time not having to take the initiative and get triggered by being forced to contact the man first. I'm really afraid that in the future, women are going to push for more advantages so they'll actually have the leg up in the dating market. What these women aren't thinking about as well as corporations like Hooters is that eventually men are going to get fed up with courtship rituals and they're basically going to get sick and tired of using dating apps and just choke the chicken at home, not only basically because it's easier, but also because it's less dangerous. Women don't want to approach men on dating apps, but they don't want the wrong guys approaching them in both real life and the virtual world. They want to put themselves out there so that the right guys find them, but not the wrong guys. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. The way that women treat so-called substandard men in the dating pool should be a wake-up call to all the top guys out there. All it takes is a few slip-ups in your life and suddenly, because you didn't sleep with her right away on the first date, it's your ass being dragged to jail for rejecting her. 
I think that's the next thing that women are going to want power over. The ability to punish the man that says no to them and reject them. Just imagine a situation where the best looking men that are in demand are afraid not to sleep with women when they're requested to because of false allegations. I know it sounds absolutely insane and irrational, but when was the last time you actually came across a rational woman? I remember in my early 20s, women didn't ask for consent, and when I actually met them, they would immediately start attacking me in sexual ways, kissing me and pushing me down to the ground and shoving my hands where the sun don't shine. Sometimes when I actually pulled back, they would try to guilt me for not wanting to be with them and shaming me for not desiring them. It's almost like men are shamed for not servicing creepy women, but when a creepy man even thinks about approaching a woman, well, now there's an app for that. But as Kelly, the Bumble dating app guinea pig, found out, it doesn't always play out in your favor. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Tom, for your donation as well as your topic request. Don't forget to smash the like button and visit the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the angel shots and lemon limes away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers!